Yeah, hello, this is Captain, and uh, welcome to the oil drilling tutorial. So, finally did enough work that I think we can get a good tutorial going here. So, let's go ahead and look at the map and see where we are. So, we're on the Meyer Island. We're just west of FD Warner Dock. There are these oil deposits. You'll see there's one there, there's one down here, there's one over here. These are going to offer you free ways to go get oil. Now, you're going to have to pay for the rig, of course, but the actual oil itself, you're not going to have to buy survey data and go out to the ocean. So I highly recommend people start on land. I see a lot of people trying to immediately go out to, to the ocean. That's fine if you're if you're okay with a little bit of frustration, but it's current, probably going to be quite a bit difficult, much more difficult. So now if we go down to the oil rig wellhead, this is what's required in order for you to be able to get oil out is to have a wellhead. If it's on the ocean, this is going to have to be on the ocean floor. These are already here for you. You don't have to set these. Now, you'll see that my well depth is already 25 meters. I already drilled down part way. That way, we don't have to drill all the way down to the bottom. Um, each well, to my understanding, has a different depth when uh, at the point when you'll hit oil. This one is about 72 meters. We'll hit oil. So as you see, our drill depth is zero because I don't have a drill in there. And the well depth, I've already drilled 25 meters just to expedite a little bit. So let's go ahead up here, and we will start working. If I can get out of this hole. All right, good. So let's go ahead up here. And so I have my cassette here with my rods. And so I'll go through the parts as we go. So I'm going to send the swivel up. Now, the swivel is important. The swivel is what puts slurry in the tank. Now, without slurry, you cannot drill. Slurry is a mixture of chemicals. And it's pumped down through the drill rod, which is hollow, IRL. And it goes down there and it lubricates the drill because the drill is going to be rotating and rubbing against all sorts of rock and whatnot, creating heat. And heat's going to warp the drill heads. And so you need to cool them. So the slurry helps lubricate. Also, as you're grinding up rock, that rock needs to go somewhere. So the slurry goes down, it lubricates, but it also takes all the particles that you're drilling and it brings them back up through the hole and it's going to go in a storage tank and then be cleaned. All right, so that's an important part. Next, we have my arm here. And my, on the end of my arm, we have the oil rig drill connector. This can both move pipe sections, but it can also attach different pipe sections together. So you can make one long pipe. It screws them together. So let's go ahead and grab it. So what I recommend is turn your table clamp on. If so we already have a 25 meter long hole. If I didn't turn that table clamp on, I could drop a rod down and it would fall all the way down the hole. So it's good to turn your table clamp on. That will make sure the, the table does not allow it to go down too far. Next, I'll turn on the clamp to my drill connector and I'll send the arm out. Now we grab, bring the arm in. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to put it over the table. We're going to go arm out. And I'm just going to hold it above there. Now I'm going to pre-select my swivel clamp, and I'm going to send my swivel down. That's going to grab and take over the holding duty. Now as soon as I hit the table, you also heard it clamp. Arm comes in, and it's going to push that all the way down. All right, so we're ready for another pipe section. So I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to move my cassette. And I have these track segments that tell me where to go. I'm going to clamp it. I'm going to send my arm out. We'll grab another one. Now... When I rotate it this time, as you can see, I have it so that this only goes down to a certain level. It doesn't go any further. And the reason is that puts it in the perfect position to connect two rods together. And so when I use them, you use the slider. I'm going to slide it up. And now you'll notice you can hear it, but it's not moving. So all you have to do is rotate a little, and it will go. So sometimes it gets stuck. You just have to rotate this. So a little bit like that, and it will go. Now... I tend to put this one right at the top of the roller section. If you have two orange pieces in the roller section, they'll be able to connect. Next thing I'm going to do is detach my swivel clamp. Now, because the table clamp is on, it's going to hold it. If, if I let go of this one, it would fall into the hole, so we don't want to do that. And we'll send our swivel all the way up. We'll rotate this, and I'll just wait for that swivel to get out. Now, I already have kind of a rhythm going here where I can do this quickly so that they're not in the way. Let's go ahead and push the arm out. Now, we get a pipe-aligned light. Now, if we look on this, when the pipes are aligned, we get a connector-aligned true statement. I just have that going into a light. As you can see, they are aligned. They're both in this roller segment. You can watch my 60-second uh, tutorial on that. Now, because the light's on, we can connect the pipes. Now, the pipes are connected, so we can unclamp this. Still being held by the table. We can retract the arm, 
And I can turn my swivel clamp on and send that down. Now the swivel is going to grab it and push it down. I leave that table clamp on pretty much the entire time. And there we go. All right, so next thing, we're ready for another rod. Because remember, I'm already 25 meters down. So each of these pipes is going to be 10 meters long. So it's going to be about 2.5 meters is what I need. So I need one more pipe, and then we'll actually start the drilling process. So I'm going to go ahead, do my clamp, do arm out. That will grab it, bring it in, rotate it, slide her up. Now I'm going to quickly send that up while I'm doing this, all for speed's sake. You'll see that once you get a little rhythm going here, you'll be quick. That will be all the way at the top by the time I get this one set up here. Rotate that. Now, as you see, they're clear. We can push that in. We can attach. We can unclamp. We can go arm in. We can go down on the swivel and grab. We can rotate. We can get the next pipe ready. All right. So now, remember I said that when we get to that third pipe, we're already 25 meters in. So let's go ahead and connect the next one here. We should be ready. So now this is all the way down. The table's holding it. Let's send that swivel up. Let's go ahead and send this out. And I'll try to do this as quickly as I can. We'll start pushing up as I rotate. Get that there. Now the swivel should be out of the way. It is. Arm. Disconnect. Swivel comes down. Arm in. Rotate. Connects it. And we'll start moving our table, our uh, cassette there full of our pipes, and we're ready. All right, so now you notice the swivel stopped. That's because we hit the level where we need to start drilling again. If we look at this, we're at 25 meters, and the hole's at 25 meters. So we need to drill to be able to get further down. All right. So I was talking about slurry and how slurry is important. So let's, let's look at where the slurry is going. So this is my slurry tank. It's full of slurry. As you see, it has 16,000 liters of slurry in there. You can put a spawner in there and spawn slurry. We're in here, full of slurry. All right. And so this slurry is being pumped out of here, through here, up the linear track. Now, this is so tall that I need two pumps. So it pumps up, and then it goes in here, pumps into the swivel head. That's going to go all the way down the rod. It's going to pick up some dirt and rock and everything else and it's going to come back up the pipe and it's going to go out here down the linear track through this pump into this waste tank from there it'll be clean so let's go ahead and start drilling i can show you a lot of this while we're drilling so i have to turn on my slurry pumps that's going to turn on this outflow pump and the inflow pump on either side now in order to drill we need slurry and we also need to turn on the table. Now I just have a large electric motor. I have infinite electricity on. We need to have that rotating to drill. We also need positive downward pressure. The positive downward pressure is from the swivel going down on these linear tracks. You hear it's making a, uh, a rock grinding noise. If that stops, it's likely because you do not have enough slurry flow. So you might need to add more pumps. I initially had this. I just had pumps on the bottom, and it wasn't enough to get it all the way down, so I had to add these pumps here. And now I have, I think it's like 65 liters per second of flow. 55, 60. starts at 60, but it's around there. And you notice it's pretty stable. It's not fluctuating too much. That's giving me good drill. So now I can do some things. Let's set up for the next one. So I'm going to turn on my clamp. I'm going to send up my arm. I'm going to grab my next pipe segment. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to bring up the the slider. I'm going to get that orange aligned where I want it. Right there. Beautiful. All right. Now, as that's coming down, let's talk about our next section. So as you can see here, this is filling. This is our waste tank. So this is taking slurry from the hole, and as you can see, it's filling up. Now, it's not 100% efficient. Look, we have 1,400 liters of good, clean slurry, and we have 1,800 liters of saturated slurry. So some of the slurry is clean already. Now, we could just build an enormous slurry tank, and guess what? If I doubled the size of this tank, we would never need to worry about slurry. Uh, we'd have enough slurry to drill all the way down. We'd never have to worry about cleaning it. If you don't have a huge tank, you have to clean your slurry. So over here, we have our slurry cleaner. I have this automated with a simple, um, with a very simple microcontroller. All it does is if this number is greater than zero, it will send water through here, which the water flushes and cleans all the rock out and this just goes in a loop and then the dirty slurry comes in here it goes through here it comes out here 
it goes down there into the ground and then it comes out here into our clean slurry tank so we should be taking some slurry out of our dirty tank and put it in our clean now as you can see we're we've drilled further down slurry pumps come off table power comes off we leave the clamp pretty much at all times we're going to disconnect the swivel clamp send it up rotate this position once that is in the way once uh, this is out of the way we can attach the next pipe so one question a lot of people are probably going to have is when do i know if i've hit oil well it's actually pretty simple you know you've hit oil let's go swivel clamp and down and this is how you get nice and efficient slurry pumps table and we're drilling again so question that's going to be important is when do i know if i hit oil well the the different drill sites are going to have different depths when you hit oil so one thing you can do is turn on your pump jack now i just have very simple linear track on the pump jacks not perfectly efficient but it's it's quick and easy and I just have a blinker on there, so it just will alternate up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's going to pump. Now, we'll know we hit oil when it starts filling our oil tank. Now, if we look at our oil tank, it's zero. So we're not, we're not there yet. Once we start pumping oil, we can stop drilling because we've hit oil. All right, so I'm going to move the cassette forward to the next slot. All right there is good. We'll turn the clamp on, arm out, grab it in rotate I'm gonna put the slider up and we're gonna get that in position so the faster the more of this stuff you get done ahead of time the quicker it's gonna be now it really in my opinion it, it doesn't take that long to drill we'd probably be down there and I'd say 20 minutes uh, for this particular hole which is 80 meters so it's really not that long um, some people are, are thinking it's too long but I think it's pretty good you know the, the the thing is this if you could if you could drill down there in two minutes once you hit oil you're done drilling. You don't need to drill anymore. It's it's acting like a straw in the bottom of a cup, right? Let's say the bottom tenth of the cup has the liquid in it, and you're pushing the straw down. Well, once you hit liquid, you don't have to push the straw down anymore. Now, they may have added something in there, whereas you take some oil, you have to go deeper. I don't know if they did or not. But, um, you know, once we're drilling, once we're pumping oil, we're good. We don't need to drill down anymore. All right, so... We have slurry going through, we're cleaning it here, and we're putting fresh slurry back in the tank. Next is our oil tank. Again, we're not gonna get oil yet. So, one thing I added here was a hose connector. The reason I did it was this, is, let's say that I screw something up, and I screw up my fractioning tower, which is quite likely that I've screwed something up. I've screwed up many things, I've had to start this over many times, that's normal. Well, what I can do is, I can drive a truck over here, and I can hook a hose, and I can suck out the oil. I can take all this oil and put it in a truck. And then guess what? I can reload this this uh, well, this rig. All I have to do is, every time you reload the well, you do have to put in the rods again. So it will maintain your drill depth in the save, but you might have to put in all the rods again. So let's say you're down 80 meters, you have to put eight rods in. A little bit tedious, but really it does not take that long. That would probably take me less than five minutes to put eight rods down there because you're not having to drill. The drilling's the slowest part. All you're doing is connecting eight rods, it's pretty quick. All right, so the next thing we have to do is, once this fills with oil, we're gonna fraction. And so what that is, is that is actually based on a realistic thing. So a lot of people, you know, wondering why, why did the devs make it complicated? Why did they do it this way? This is weird. It's not really weird, it's, it's how it's done in real life. So let's look at a fractional distillation tower as we're drilling. All right, so this is a fractional distillation tower. And so what you do is take crude oil. Crude oil is made up of a bunch of different compounds the oil is heated now if you think of it this way let's say you take a glass and you put some water in it and then you put in some oil and then you put in some sand and then you put in a bolt right the bolt is going to go all the way to the bottom it's the most dense then you're going to have the sand and then you're going to have the water then you're going to have the oil well you could take something like a little piece of soap and it would drop it in and it would sit on the top of the oil and then on top of the of the oil you put a ping pong ball that's mostly air that's going to sit on top the same thing is here the heaviest elements are residues like bitumen those are used to make asphalt next heaviest is fuel oil those are for ships lubricating oil for cars diesel kerosene naphtha petrol and then refinery gas like propane and butane so when you put it in the in the tower just the different heights are going to be when you can tap off so you could open up this pipe and let out kerosene you could open up this pipe and let out diesel and so we have the same thing in game so let's check on our drill 
All right, so let's go and see what our progress is. So I can talk about this as we're rolling. So we're there. All right, so slurry pump's coming off. Table is coming off. Make sure the clamp stays on. Swivel clamp, go all the way up. Start rotating my crane there. I can leave that pump jack on. All it's doing right now is wasting electricity, but it's not a big deal because I have infinite electricity on. All right, now we can go swivel clamp back down. And once that stops, we can drill again. Back to drilling. All right, so let's get set up for the next one. We'll push the cassette over. Uh, we'll go clamp on, arm out, in, rotate, slider up. As you can see, once you get used to your systems, you're pretty quick here. So that's set. Now we can continue to talk about fractional distillation. So how does it work in game? Well, in my opinion, you want a nice thin tower, and you want it as thin as you can get it. And so currently I have a footprint of about three to three by three. And so we're inside my fractional distillation. And the reason is these distillation ports, like those pipes that I just showed you on that diagram, those are the ports where you can take off the different types of materials. We put in a fractional distillation port. Now this is all dependent upon the height, like it is in real life. So people think, some people think the devs just pulled this out of out of thin air. No, they pulled this out of reality. And so you have these fractional distillation ports, and you can see it says currently collecting diesel, and that's because at a certain height, it will tell you what it's going to, to uh, collect. So you can just test this out. Put it in your world, put it in an enclosed space, and raise it in the thing. You can put them one on top of the other, and then read them all and see what they say. So between 7 and 25 blocks, you're going to get diesel. 25 or greater, you're going to get jet fuel. Anything below 7, you're going to keep oil. So oil will always be in the bottom. And the, another thing they added with this last update is before, if, you, if I had a temperature probe in an enclosed space like this and I had one outside, they'd read the same temperature. Now it's different. This temperature probe is going to read the temperature inside this sealed space. A temperature probe outside would read this, the temperature outside. And so this is actually going to tell me what the temperature of my oil is inside. Now I have a little slot here. That slot is just uh, half blocks, just wedges. And that allows the oil to go up past this distillation port. So this is my diesel distillation port. I'm going to stand on top of it. Again, we read it. It says collecting diesel. If I look above it, we have one that says collecting jet fuel. This one's above 25 blocks. It's collecting jet fuel. This one is between 7 and 25 blocks. This is collecting diesel. So now I pull off this port with a pump, put it in this tank. This is my diesel storage tank. This one's my jet fuel storage tank. That goes in there. All right. Now, in order to get distillate, right, to, in order to get either the diesel or the jet fuel, we need to heat this up. And so I have a pump here. It's connected to a simple toggle button. That will allow me to take oil, crude oil, and fill the fracturing tower. So this would be my recommendation. Fill the fraction tower all the way to the top. Shut this off. The reason is this. The oil is going to be about 21 degrees Celsius. Think of it this way. If you were boiling a pot of water and you got it close to boiling and then you kept adding cold water, it would keep dropping the temperature and it would take longer and longer and longer and longer for you to boil the water. It would take longer for you to raise the temperature. Now, the bigger the tank you have here, the longer it's going to take. Same thing if you took a 20-gallon pot of water on the stove. It would take forever for that to boil because it's a lot of water. You have to put a lot of energy in it to boil it. The smaller the volume, the quicker you're going to be able to boil it. Now, we can only get to about a 3-by-3 three to three by three footprint because of those distillation ports, so that's why my, t my fraction tower is nice and thin. On the, side, uh, on the side here, I have my temperature, and I have just the uh, quantity in there. I didn't label them. But. All right, so next thing we have is a furnace. Now, there are a bunch of furnaces now. There's electric, there's diesel, and there's still your furnace for coal. Um, people have talked about the different efficiencies. I don't really care about the efficiencies. I want a diesel so that it's self-sustaining. Now, I have a pump going into my fractional distillation tower here, right here. That's going to draw the oil from the fractional distillation. It's going to put it through the furnace, heat it up, it's going to go back in here, and it's going to just cycle. And that's going to raise the temperature of the oil in here. Once it gets above 300 degrees Celsius, we'll be able to start taking off diesel and jet fuel. 
I have a couple tanks here that feed my diesel furnace. I have an ignition source so that I can turn it on. I have air to feed it, and I have exhaust. Over here, I have my pump control for this pump. I have my pump control for that pump. I have my quantities, and I just have a couple ports here so that I can hook up a truck and take out either diesel or jet fuel. These two are diesel tanks that will feed my furnace, and then here, I have a little valve, I can open that, and I can drain from this tank and refill my tanks there. So let's go ahead and go back, and the drill is getting there, it's not quite there yet. So let's check our quantities here on slurry, so we're at 14.6 here, and we're at 2,000. So we're almost out of slurry, we're going to have to start cleaning some slurry. Now, I've had this happen before where I run out of slurry, oh my god it's so bad, nope you maintain the depth at which you've drilled. So if we've drilled down to, let's see where we're at now. We're down to 50 meters. If you save your game, you'll still be at 50 meters. You go in the work, you know, the workbench here, you pull this off, this out, you reboot it, you're full of slurry again. Now you are gonna have to put the pipes back in, but you're not gonna have to drill again. So that's a big thing. So now we need about three more pipes and we'll hit oil. So we're almost here on this pipe here, but we're almost out of slurry. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut off my slurry pumps. Now look at this number going down. When I shut off my slurry pumps, right, slurry is no longer going through this drill head. So this tank is no longer filling. Now why is it going down? Because we're cleaning it. It's going through the cleaning system, and it is cleaning it and filling this tank back up. So we should look over here and have this slurry tank filling. As you can see, it is filling. So we might have to take a little break and let that uh, clean, but that's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and table can be shut off. The swivel clamp, make sure your table clamp is on. We don't want that falling in the hole. Swivel clamp can come off and send the swivel up. Send that over. We'll connect pipes again. Now, I don't need the pump jack on, but again, we're pretending I don't know what depth I'm going to hit oil. I do know what depth I'm going to hit oil because I've done this before. Connect the pipes in. Swivel clamp down. Alright, so I'm actually going to let it clean for a little bit. And have a minor coughing fit. Alright, we're going to send that across and let's get set up. Now I'm actually going to let it clean. As you see, that's going down. We'll let that clean for a little bit. And we're getting close. We're almost there. We just need a clean enough slurry that we have enough to get there. All right, so this is in position. We can leave this. All right, now let's go see how much slurry we have. We'll, we'll go until it runs out. Now, we don't have to worry about this. It will be very slow. I don't have to worry about it because we are cleaning slurry. Um, but I can start the system up again. We're going to run out of slurry. When we run out of clean slurry, all it's going to do is we're not going to be able to drill down anymore. So we can leave the system. We can go AFK. This will eventually clean enough, and when it sends enough through, it will keep drilling. If I made this tank maybe 20% bigger, we wouldn't have to clean at all. I kind of want to clean. I want to have that reason to do it. Plus, I can use this rig on a hole that might be 100 meters deep. You know, I might want more robust. I might want two of these cleaners so that I send it over there. So this is all stuff I'm learning, how quickly we clean. We clean pretty slowly. It's not a big deal. It's just how fast we clean. As you see, we are still drilling, though. All right, so currently, let's check our depth. We have to hit about 72 meters on this particular hole to get there. So we have about 20 meters left. So two more pipes. All right, so that pretty much talks about all the systems that you need here in order to get your rig up and running. And so this will eventually be in the workshop. I have a lot of labeling to do. I will finish this up, make it look a little bit prettier. It doesn't need to be super pretty. It's an example. But as you can see, we're down to our last set of pipes. Now, initially what I did was I made cassettes that could be loaded onto trucks. Really, I don't know how long some of the longer holes are going to be, but you could do that. Or you could just put enough on the rig that you're going to have enough. It's up to you. If you want to, you know, if you're going to play with some friends, you might want to have to go get trucks and get new cassettes full of uh, rods or not. It's up to you. So now you can hear we are intermittently drilling. We drill, then we stop drilling. We drill, we stop drilling. Actually, we, no, we're continuing to drill. We're actually doing a pretty good job of cleaning the slurry. As you can see, 
We are losing, but we're losing pretty slowly. So actually, we just got a big inflow of uh, clean slurry there. And so let's actually fly into this tank here. And let's look at our fluid meter. So you see we have... This will only take that clean slurry because the only thing that's going to come out of our cleaner is clean slurry. Now, we're actually going up sometimes. Watch that. So it's at 1026. We'll get a nice inflow of liquid here, as you can see. And so that's going to give us some more. So eventually, we'll run out of slurry. When we run out of slurry, the drill is going to pause, but we're continually cleaning, and it will keep going on its own. So I could go AFK for however long it's going to take. So I will get back to you guys when we need another pipe section. All right, so we're continuing drilling here. Let's see, we're cleaning some slurry. So I had a little issue with slurry cleaning. As you can see, we're cleaning slurry a little bit faster now, I think. Let me look. Yeah, see, we're cleaning slurry pretty fast now. So one thing I added was once this tank was full, I put on a filter. Um, I might need a filter over here, so you might need a filter on your inflow valve as well. I have to check, but... Um, you know, so like I was talking about, it's not a huge deal if you run out of slurry. All you have to do is relaunch the rig, and you do have to reatt reattach your pipes, but like I said, it took me less than five minutes to do it. I put, what was it, uh, seven pipes down the well in less than five minutes, and I, I respawned slurry. So you're going to get all your money back. It's not a big deal if you have to do that. I'm going to turn the pump back on here. Should be hitting oil pretty soon here. Uh, like I said, I think it's around 72 meters on this particular wellhead. So we're at 61, so we're within about one rod length. So this should be our last uh, drilling rod we have to attach. If you do have a issue cleaning your slurry, check with filters. Sometimes the filters are helping it to clean. And we're almost there. All right, so that is now stop. Let's go ahead, shut the slurry pump off table. And let's go up. And as you see, this is counting down. That's because we're cleaning that slurry. So I think it had something to do with once this is all air, it was having an issue. But this should be our last pipe link here. Let me your arm in. Now, these pipes are, magnetics are not the right word, but they, they are attracted to one another. So sometimes you'll notice they're trying to pull each other. And so just move them apart if you're having that issue. But that makes it easier to connect them. All right, so drilling back on. So we should be, uh, this should be our last section. So we are drilling, and when we hit oil, we'll start filling our oil tank. Now, I could hook this up to a light. I could hook it up to a bunch of systems to tell me, hey, you've hit oil. But uh, we should be getting there soon. Once we hit about, on this well, 72 meters. So that's, that's going to be the way to tell, is to have your pump jack going, and then you can see... Uh, when you're actually getting oil. I don't think it's a big deal if you drill deeper than you need to. It's just, you know, might waste a little of your time if you feel that way. You know, so you could wait until you get deeper to turn the pump jack on. You're just going to be spending more time drilling than you necessarily need to. But, you know, I don't think the time investment's all that bad. Some people have already said, oh, you know, why would you do this when there's better ways to make money? Quote, unquote, better. Not everybody does things because it makes the most profit. They do it because they enjoy it. There are certain people who don't like the search and rescue missions. There are certain people who only like the search and rescue missions. And so people are going to play how they want. I really like the oil stuff. I'm going to do a bunch of the oil stuff because it's fun. And so I don't really care if it makes me a, a ton of money. Like, the mon monetary investment in this should actually be pretty, pretty small because this particular, this particular wellhead I don't have to buy, I don't believe. Uh, you may have to buy it in a creative game, I'm not 100% sure, but, you know, it's passive income. You pretty much continually run, if, you know, you could leave this on, you could put a timer that once these two tanks are full, it will automatically shut off the furnace, and, you know, you can't get too far away from it, but, you know, you could sit here AFK, let it do a bunch of oil, and then go transport the oil and make tons of money, but I think, you know, one of the ways people will often get bored in game is if they're... If you have too much money, you know, it's, it's like in real life, you get bored because it's like, well, what's my motivation, you know? And so it's like, you go to work because you want a motorcycle or something, you you know, you do it. So that's kind of in game. I don't like to make ridiculous amounts of money. All right, so we're getting close here. 
This is drilling. This is drilling at a, a pretty regular rate. We're cleaning. If we come over here, we do tool tips on this. As you can see, we have slurry in is about five liters per second. Slurry out is about uh, five liters per second. That's putting five liters per second back in here. Now, my assumption would be, I'll show you what I did here. So I just put a filter um, on this port, but I also put a, an outflow filter. So if you do run out of slurry, again, it's not the end of the world. You just have to reload your rig. The drill, the depth of your well stays the same. It's just a little bit of a time constraint. So I'm going to wait here. We should be hitting oil in this next pipe, and that's a spare pipe we don't need. Again, for this particular well. So, you know, I will be drilling at other wells. So we're about six meters from hitting oil. I think we'll hit it before that. That's just when I noticed it last time was 72. So let's go and look. We're, we're past 60 meters. Up, oh, and we hit oil already. Okay, so this, this well is 60 meters. So let's stop drilling. So slurry pumps off table off. We want to keep the swivel clamp clamped. We'll keep the table clamp clamped. And we are drilling oil, people. So here we are. We're drilling oil. As you can see, we're, we're filling our tank. Uh, there are better ways, you know, more efficient pump jack methods if you want. This is just simple. That's why I went with this. And so I'm going to start to fill my fractioning tower. So turning on this pump, as you can see, now we're pumping out. So we're going to let that oil go right in here. Now, the oil is cold. So if we look at our temperature, we're down to 20 degrees. We're at 29 degrees in that space. So the air was 29 degrees. The oil is 20 degrees. As you can see, we're filling up with oil. And once we get all the way up with oil, I want to fill this tower completely. I don't know my, my values yet. Once I know maximum tank values, I could just look at the, the meters. But I haven't set it up yet. When I put it in the workshop, all this will be filled out. But as you can see, I could turn on this pump here, and I can remove oil out of here if I wanted. That's why that's on there. And so as you can see, we're pumping in, but we're also drying out here. So once this fills up, I will turn on the furnace system. Now, I don't want to waste any diesel. The only, I tried this before, and I actually ran out of diesel with one large tank before I made any diesel. And so that could be problematic because... You know, once this furnace shuts off, we can't raise the temperature anymore. We can't make any diesel. And so what I'm doing is, and so I can also use this port here. I could bring diesel in a truck and fill it up to get us a little seed diesel to start if I wanted. But with two tanks, we should have enough to get up over 300 degrees. It takes a little while. People are talking that the, some people are talking that the, coal furnace is more efficient than the diesel furnace. I don't know where the electric one is, but it's up to you. Whatever system you want. I'm, I'm glad they added more parts. Really glad they added a diesel furnace. We can do uh, steam-driven stuff now with this. Uh, but it's, it's kind of up to, up to you what you want to use for that. All right, so we're filling up. Let's go ahead and look in here. So the volume shouldn't be too much in here. Let me look at what it is off of this uh, fluid meter here. So I'm going to check. The capacity is 46.95. So this is, again, you know, I talked about why I chose to do a nice thin tower. You know, it's the, it's the example I use. You have a huge pot of water. It's going to take a very long time to boil. You have a small pot of water. It's going to boil more quickly. And so we are trying to get this volume of liquid up to 300 degrees as quick as possible. And so we don't want to put more liquid in there than we need. And once this gets going, as we drain off liquid to go into our diesel and our jet fuel tanks, we can then turn this pump back on and add it. This is all at 20 degrees. This is cold. So we don't want to add too much cold liquid in there until we get up over 300 degrees. It would be like adding cold water to your boiling water the whole time. Yeah, so let's uh, quickly look at it. And we should be getting close. Once we get up and this needle stops, we're, we're almost there. That's at 3,000. So we shut off our slurry. We shut off the slurry pump, and notice the volume is going down over here. So I needed filters, so that was something that I was questioning. So it could very well be once this fills with air, you definitely need filters to make sure that you're not pumping air, because once air gets in the pump, I think it only wants to pump air. So you may want to put filters on all of your fluid pumps for this system to make sure you don't get air locked, vapor locked, um, you know, in real life, vapor locking is not a huge deal, but apparently in game it's an issue. I wonder if you could do an exhaust because, you know, in real life you do have to exhaust the gas or else you're going to either crush the container 
or you're going to explode the container. And so they, there are actually some cool pictures. I'll see if I can find one while we wait of a train car that got crumpled. All right, so here's a picture of a train car that was crumpled. And so as you take the liquid out, right, you're pumping the liquid out. Now, people, because we live in the atmosphere, we think it's nothing. Well, it, it is something. It weighs something. It's, at sea level, it's 14 pounds per square inch. So you have 14 pounds every square inch. So right here, that's a square inch. There's 14 pounds pushing on that. And so the reason this doesn't crush is as you pull out oil, let's say it's oil, pull out oil, you're letting air in there, and that now you have air at 14 PSI on the inside, you have air at 14 PSI on the outside, you don't crumple. If the air vent gets blocked, as you try to pull liquid out, it's now you have 14 PSI on here and you have a vacuum, you have nothing in here. And so you have, it easily crumples a tank like that. So could have some mechanics like that in game. You know, we're not getting the actual crumpling effect, but we're, what's happening is the pumps cannot overcome the pressure. So I'm not sure that's in, I doubt that's in, but what, it's most likely happening game is we're getting vapor locked and so you're getting vapor in there and now the pumps only want to move air and you want them to move liquid so as you can see we're cleaning our slurry so this system works pretty well now able to get down there able to recycle enough this tank's going to eventually f empty and this one is going to fill and we'll have clean slurry not necessarily necessary you could even do it where you just dump it on the ground but you know kind of rp wise i like to clean it all right, so let's check where we're at here. So we're getting close. We're at uh, 3,800. We need to get to 30, uh, 4,600 and change. This tank will be full. Let's go ahead and fly in here and check it out. All right, and as you can see, it can go by in this little um, wedge section here and fill all the way up. As you can see, we're already up here. We're, uh, we're nearing a full distillation tank. As you can see, we're just hitting the jet fuel um, nozzle. Now, the way I have this set up is going to allow me to pull what I want off of this. Because I have pumps here, let's say I only want jet fuel. I turn on my jet fuel pump, and I'm only ever going to pull off jet fuel. If I only want to pull off diesel, I can turn on my diesel valve. If I want a either random or even mech, some people will say, some people were saying that it's coming out pretty even. Depends on where it is in your distillation tank. I think I'm not 100% sure. But if you put on uh, pumps with toggle buttons, you can say, hey, I only want diesel. And so at first, I'm going to distill a bunch of diesel, and that way I can make sure that these tanks stay full. Now, I don't know how much diesel it's going to use compared to what I'm making. We'll see. That's uh, This will actually be my first run of testing that. But we should be getting close here. All right, so we're almost there. Uh, we're about 400 liters away now i'm going to shut off the pump that's going between this because remember this is 20 degrees the oil that's in this tank i don't want to be putting cold oil in here because it's going to lower my temperature and so i'm going to shut that off once this fills and let this heat up again it's like the boiling pot you're trying to boil a pot of water and you keep adding cold water to it it's going to take forever to boil if you let it naturally just come up to boil it's going to be quicker so we're almost there here, 300. I'll check back in with you guys when we hit this full. All right, so the fractional distillation tank is full. As you can see, we have 4,695.31 liters of oil in the fractional distillation tank. So I'm going to shut the pump off. I don't want cold oil to continually go in there. That will just increase. This will keep filling up with oil from the pump jack. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my furnace. You'll see it's starting to heat up. Ignition is on. It's going to start burning the uh, diesel fuel to heat up. Next, I'm going to turn on my two cycle pumps here. I could automate this, but I'm doing it this way so you can see. All right, so this is going to cycle that that fluid through to give us uh, to heat it up. Now, we're at about 21.7 degrees before I started this up. As you can see, we're climbing. Now, need to keep an eye on our diesel here. It burns quite a bit of diesel, so we have to be careful here trying to get this uh, up to temp. So I'll test it, and we'll see. Hopefully this isn't an issue. If it is, I will reload it and fix it and show you then. But um, a lot of this is still new to me. It takes a long time to kind of get all the kinks worked out here. So I will get back to you guys when we're a little bit closer. All right, welcome back. So this is taking a little while. I would probably add more furnaces, but we are up over 300 degrees, and... I actually, you'll notice I'm not using any fuel, and that's because I shut off the, or I 
went in my options here and I did infinite fuel and that's just gonna make so I'm not burning fuel so I probably actually need more diesel to get us up to temp uh, it's a little bit slow but we did get up to temp we're up to 322 now a better method might have been for me to instead of filling this all away uh, heat as I was going but I wanted to make sure that I was being the most efficient so we're up over 322 degrees now once we get over 300 degrees Celsius as stated by the devs we should be able to turn this on and start to take out diesel fuel so right there is the fractioning port for diesel and if I turn that on as you can see we're taking diesel out and we're decreasing the level in there so what I'm gonna do is so the oil is being converted to diesel we're losing volume this tank is now 100% full of oil and so we can pump that back in and as you can see we're gently losing temperature so we're gonna have to shut that off before it goes below 300 uh, what I have here is I'm gonna go ahead and turn off infinite fuel and I'm gonna open this valve and now this is gonna allow diesel fuel to fill these tanks allowing me to uh, essentially use this tank to refill my system so you know if you want a quicker temperature you know if you want to more quickly get up to temperature you're gonna probably want to make sure that you have more furnaces see one of the fears here is if I get under 300 this is gonna stop so let's actually let it get under 300 and see if it just hard stops if I want to take some jet fuel I could open this up and we're taking jet fuel so we can go both if we want and once this gets under 300 degrees the likelihood is that it's going to stop so we're waiting for that and so what I would recommend is probably more furnaces somebody was saying coal is more efficient if you're if you're interested but the thing is with coal is you can have to hump in coal uh, you can do the electric furnace, but the issue with the electric furnace is you're going to have to have some sort of production method. So you might find that a diesel motor can produce enough electricity to run the electric furnace, and it's more efficient than burning it in here. Or we might do a couple of these, either parallel or in series. So I will further figure that out, but as you can see, we are working. So we've gone through everything. We've gone down, we've drilled, we're about to go under 300 degrees here. Let's get under and all right, here we go. So watch and see if these just stop hard once we get under 300 degrees. And so we should be under 300 degrees and they're still going, so that's good. Yep, we're under 300 degrees and these are still going. So we're still running both of these, no problem. All right, nice. So as you can see, this one is 900. This one has 600 uh, jet fuel in there. And so to kind of recap what we've done here is we've drilled all the way down. This ended up being about 60 meters actually to get oil. So we've gone down 60 meters. Uh, let me actually, we'll get an accurate well depth here. Uh, 67 meters is where we hit oil and I probably hit it before that. So we're somewhere between 60 and 67 meters. We hit oil. And so we need to put our pipes in, we need to connect them, we need to pump slurry through, we need to clean our slurry, unless we choose to have a very large slurry tank. Once you are at the depth of the oil, as far as I know for now, now they could make it where, like for example in real life, think of it like you stick your straw down the top of your drink. As soon as you've, you've uh, sipped up all that drink, well now the straw is sucking air, it's not sucking oil anymore. That might be the way it works in game, probably not, I doubt they model that in, they could have though. And so we're also cleaning our slurry. So if we look at our slurry here, you see we're still, I think we're, we're probably where we're vapor locked. I think we're, we're air locked, but as you see, we've cleaned all this slurry. And so our slurry is clean. So we went through, we drilled our slurry, cleaned our, we drilled the hole, we cleaned our slurry, we, we uh, mined some oil. We fraction the oil into the two components that we can fraction into, which is diesel and jet fuel. And those are going. We have the ability to take take off oil from here. So, for example, I talked about the added surge pricing. That's going to increase and decrease the price. So, for example, if you sell a ton of oil, the price is probably going to go down. If, if not a lot of oil has been in the market, it's probably going to go up. So right now, oil is considerably more expensive or you will make more money with oil now than you used to currently so for example you could buy diesel before 35 cents now you can buy diesel for 17 cents there's gonna be surge pricing so these are gonna change more often all right 
Here's a jet fuel buy for 71 cents. Probably if you buy a bunch of that, it's going to drive the price up because demand's going up. Right now, oil is selling for $5.73. That's a lot for oil. So we could take the oil off, truck it over, put it on a ship, send it over if we wanted. Let's look at, we have a jet fuel sale point up here. This is more money. This is $9.86. So currently we're talking, we have about 2000 uh, liters in there, so we're talking $18,000 already in the bank in our tanks. And so that's right there. If you really wanted to make some insanity money, uh, let's see what we can get up here for diesel. Diesel's tend to see, actually, it's not as much as it used to be. We used to have huge amounts of profitability by going up to the Arctic. It really isn't that extra much. That's only an extra, say, 10, uh, what was it? That'd be about $1,800 to go up here. Um, from down there. So right now it's not worth making that long fuel run where it used to be. We can sell jet fuel here for 822. So, you know, you're going to have to watch your prices. This is uh, going to be fun. You know, I, I know some people are like, oh, I can make more profit doing this or going to make more profit doing that. Not everything is about profit. It's about are you having fun with the game? And personally, this was a big update for me. I really enjoy this. I hope you guys have some insight from this video of how to go from the beginning of drilling all the way through the end of drilling and i hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful and we'll see you in the next one